Look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the holy mysteries of Christ with us, crucified and risen. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, our Father, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call you our Father. Bring to perfection in our hearts, we pray, the spirit of filial adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit with your grace to enter into the inheritance that you have promised us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. 
Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, The wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A story about two high school students in Brooklyn. And they were talking over the awful report cards they had received recently. And one of them asked the other one, George, what did your mother and father say to you when they saw that you got five Fs? on your report card. And George said, oh, they didn't say anything to me at all. They were too busy arguing about which side of the family I take after.
That's Brooklyn. That's Brooklyn. God bless them. They hold nothing back. We can safely say that that family entirely missed the point of the dreadful report card. Missing the point was something the disciples of Jesus seemed to do with some frequency. This was actually a great source of frustration to our Lord. Jesus had just fed some 5,000 people with just a handful of bread and a couple of fish. And the crowds were thrilled. They were thrilled. They simply loved Jesus. Free fish sandwiches, of course. And the disciples were happy with Jesus because the people were happy. And they could all fill their bellies and feel good. How good I feel. The disciples were no fools, however. They thought that now the great moment has come. Ah, the great moment has come, and Jesus, okay, he's kicked the traces, and he now is going to get in there with the folks who will carry him on their shoulders to the top. With the support of the enthusiastic mob, as the apostles were thinking, <clears throat> Jesus could put himself at the head of an army and throw the, throw the uh, Palestinians, throw, throw the pagans, the Romans, okay, out of Palestine. And they would be field marshals in our Lord's triumphant revolutionary forces. That's how they thought. But then Jesus went and spoiled the whole thing. At the height of his popularity, with everybody singing his praises, wolfing down fish sandwiches, Jesus said to them, get in the boat, get in the boat and go to the other side of the sea. Go, get, get. But master, look at us standing in the gallop poles. Don't you want to be popular with the people? The message of Jesus to these men and to his future church, a message they have not always followed, is in that key word, go, go, get in the boat. We're not here to win a popularity contest. We're here to give living witness to the kingdom of God Almighty. That's why we're here. We don't wait around for the applause of the crowd. Question, do we desire profoundly, all of us, to receive the approval of the world that we live in? Being diplomatic is one thing, but deeply seeking the approval of the crowds, it's a bad habit, and it grows, and it gets worse. And you end up, you know, being a, a Catholic who approves of same-sex marriage, indeed proposes it on television, and then uh, gets in a fight with the little sisters of the poor because they don't want to, they don't want to reward their employees uh, for um, abortions. I want an abortion, I need money for an abortion, you have to pay me, I don't care your little sister of the poor. Oh, really? Do enough of that. Do enough of that, and you become very quickly uh, captains in the army of the devil. Do we desire profoundly the approval of the world that we live in? Have we grown too comfortable here in our indulgent society? There's nothing wrong with a comfortable society, but there is something terribly wrong in a society in which people who call themselves Catholics indulge in paganism? Do we fit in so thoroughly and never raise a question about the values and the attitudes of those around us? It is what I like to call the passion to be safe. Play it safe. 
If so, we have a real problem. Go, 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 go. The operative word here. Make an agonizing reappraisal of yourself as my disciple and continue following me on my terms, not on yours. Ouch. But even if you do go and try to carry out what Jesus says, even then there still seem to be problems. Right? Right. The disciples were sulking. And they grew resentful. But they got in the boat. And then that night a storm arose and the little boat was being tossed this way and that. The winds were howling and the disciples were scared out of their wits. Even before they started screaming out for Jesus to help them, Jesus comes to them in this nightmare and reassures them, get hold of yourselves. It is I. You have nothing to be afraid of because you are doing what I asked you to do. Ah, there's an operative phrase. You have nothing to fear because you're doing what I asked you to do. No more, no less. This is a fact of life, a reality for those who live in a close, sincere union with Jesus and his church. <clears throat> And by the way, Jesus and his church are inseparable. <clears throat> if one, okay, wishes to be a follower of Jesus, but has all kinds of thoughts or proposals or programs that are contrary to the teachings of his church, they are thinking and acting in a way contrary to the Lord, plain and simple. When the risen Jesus promised to be with us forever, he made this promise not to you, 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 and me. He made this promise to his church. This is where, okay, this is where modern Christianity goes off the edge. The promises were not made to us as individuals, but to the church. Boom. When the risen Jesus says, I send you the Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit who guides and who comes, but he comes to the church. He comes to the church. And to us as individuals, to the extent that we're deeply, profoundly united to Jesus in and through the church, when we're deeply united, profoundly taken up with the presence of Jesus in the church, then all his promises are fulfilled. Instead, you have all of these partially dissatisfied, completely dissatisfied, even suicidal people running around. I have in my life tried to do everything Jesus wanted me to do, but I don't go to Mass on Sunday. That's, I follow Jesus. Uh, you are a kook. You really are a kook because you have here the words of Jesus. Parse them correctly. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Holy Spirit does not operate through mavericks. The Holy Spirit doesn't operate through stalwart loners, the independent operators, no. Oh, I can go on my own way. I can find Jesus on my own. I'll find God on the beach. I'll find God in the forest. I myself, good luck. The certitude given to us by our Lord is that the risen Jesus is with his church forever. And it is, it is this certitude you can hang your hat on. He has given to us calm and strength as Christians down through the ages when we're Christians who live in, through, and with the church. Then Peter always the impulsive one. Peter sees Jesus walking on the water in the midst of the storm. And happy as a child, he says, Jesus, Jesus, please 
Make me walk on the water too. All right, Jesus said, come to me. Come to me. Get out of the boat. Risk danger and failure and come to me. But first, you have to place total trust and confidence in me. <clears throat> and this Peter failed to do. He got out of the boat and then realized it was more hazardous than he had foreseen. The winds were stronger than he had planned on, and he grew hysterical and began to sink. Peter was willing to place his trust in Jesus, but only up to a point, only up to a point. And that was the problem. I'm always amazed, there's one statement I heard up in New York a long time ago, and I think it explains so much of the psychological, spiritual disasters of our world in the present age. You know how it goes? You can memorize it. Oh God, if you exist, help me if you can. Oh God, if you exist, help me if you can. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It has to be total surrender, absolute surrender into the hands of God with nothing held back. Or God cannot help you. Painful? Yes. Scary? Yes. But necessary? You got it. Don't look back and say to the Lord, Lord, I called on you. I needed you. You didn't come to my aid. Ah, but did you trust? with nothing held back. <clears throat> this is a little story. Some of you may have heard this or a variation of it, the total trust that we are supposed to possess and live. There was a man who was climbing a high mountain in the wintertime. And despite it all, the snow and the ice, he nearly made it with all his gear to the top of the mountain. Then he lost his footing and he began to slide and he was tumbling and falling and down he soared. <clears throat> but thanks be to God, <clears throat> there was a tree growing out of the side of a cliff and he reached out and he held on to one branch for his dear life. <clears throat> He's hanging between heaven and earth and he looks up and he cries out, hello, Lord, are you up there? And the Lord answered and said, yes, I am here. And the desperate man cried out again, Lord above, I need your help. Save me. What should I do? And Jesus said, trust me, my friend. Let go of that branch, trusting fully in me. And the man looks up and cries out, is there anybody else up there? Conditioned hope. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the whole point of Christian hope is that when there are no visible, tangible reasons for thinking that anything good can happen, then with all, then with all our strength and nothing held back, surrender yourself into the hands of the Lord. That's what it means to stretch out your hands in genuine need to Christ. That's what it means. And this is the disposition required if our prayer of need is to be answered by him who is the Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Let us together make our Catholic profession of faith I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, brothers and sisters in Christ, we place ourselves in the Holy Spirit as we, as we pray. <clears throat> for this nation and every nation, for progress toward peace through justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the working poor, the elderly, and the homeless, for a living wage, good medical care, and a safe environment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nation of Lebanon, as it struggles to recover from the blast in Beirut, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For respect of all human life, for an end to abortion and euthanasia, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing for all who are sick of the COVID-19 virus, and for comfort and consolation for all who are mourning the loss of a loved one during this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our country and an end to the violence, rioting, looting, and racism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> we must be conscious at every moment of our lives <clears throat> that in the celebration of the holy sacrifice of the Mass, it is Christ who is offering himself fully and entirely to the Father, and the intentions of us all are in his heart. We pray always for the needs of the faithful, especially for help in this time of epidemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings and prayers for Bu Pe Zhu and his family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And the intentions of those who have died, are ceaselessly and forever in the heart of Christ our Savior in his church, in his sacrifice. In a special way for Carol and Edwards, for Art and Sarah Boraglio, for Rodolfo and Henalin Irebede, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, Almighty Father, grant to us faith in abundance, limitless hope, and the charity and generosity that flows from the Lord. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Usually at this time, we have the weekly collection. Although you cannot be here with us at this time, we ask you to consider and remember your parents. We will be celebrating the rites of initiation with the catechumens and candidates of our parish at the live stream mass that morning. One important change about that mass, that mass will take place at 9.30, not 10 a.m. So mass on the 16th will be at 9.30. And please keep our catechumens and candidates in your prayers this week. Every year on August 15th, the Catholic Church honors Mary's Assumption into Heaven. To honor Our Lady and celebrate our parish feast day, we will be hosting a number of socially distant home-based activities. We invite parishioners of all ages to join together in prayer and praise for this joyous, joyous feast. Information is on our website, Facebook, and Instagram. The novena to Our Lady of the Assumption will begin on August 7th, that's tomorrow, and starting August 9th, we will have children's packets filled with activities and goodies available for pickup at the church. Thank you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. We pray and glory in his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, Lord God, to accept the offerings of your church. For in your great mercy you have given these gifts to be offered. And by the power of the Holy Spirit you transform the bread and wine into the mystery of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father in heaven, it is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Jesus, your Son, humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion and death on the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, the risen Christ has given to us eternal life. And so, Father, with angels, archangels, thrones, and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed the font of all holiness. Sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, we pray, sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dew, that they may become for us the sacred body and the precious blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed, entering willingly upon his passion and death, at the Last Supper, Jesus took bread And giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice once more, Father, giving you thanks. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and and profess profess your resurrection resurrection until until you come come again. Therefore, Lord God, as we celebrate this living memorial of your Son's death and resurrection, we offer to you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks, Lord God, that you have considered us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. Humbly, Lord, we pray, 
that partaking of the sacred body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church extended throughout all the earth. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with the Bishop of Rome, our Holy Father Francis, the diocesan Bishop Peter, their fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember, Lord, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of your son's resurrection and all who have died in your divine mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your presence. Father, have mercy upon us all, we pray, that with the Holy Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, with St. John the Baptist, with the evangelists, with the apostles, with all the martyrs and saints who pleased you throughout the ages. Lord God, may we merit to be co-heirs with them to unending life in your kingdom, praising and glorifying you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. United in Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, one with his church, preparing to receive the food of disciples, the body and blood of Christ, we dare to pray as Jesus taught the apostles. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us your peace in our day, that with the help of your divine mercy, Lord, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, awaiting the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are, are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant to us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. Only say the word.
The bread that I will give, says the Lord, is my flesh for the life of the world. Let us pray. Lord God, may the Holy Communion in the sacrament of your body and blood that we have celebrated and consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God.